Well, I'm so glad you guys have joined us. Who's us? Just me in here, man. Talking to myself like a lunatic. This is the 960. We've got two of them here. We've got the GTX 960 Strix from Asus featuring the DirectCU 2 cooling unit, smaller PCB. And then over there, that's the uh, MSI Twin... Well, it's not the Twin Frozer, but it is the Twin Frozer, but this is that's the uh, 100 million edition with the fancy green. I feel very special to have that. It's a limited edition. So... Two interesting cards. This one has a 6-pin power. That one has an 8-pin power. I was able to do a little bit more overclocking with that one. Probably because it has a you know, bit more power going to it. But the uh, performance is interesting. So in this video, what we're going to do is cover some of the technology that NVIDIA has put into the 960. We're going to do some SLI benchmarks. And yes, I did put these two together in the same system like a bastard. But it will give you guys an idea of how, you know, if you buy two of the same card, how they will work together. And then we're going to compare that to the performance of a single 970 because it's... Uh, a little cheaper to get a 970 than it is to get two of these. This is a Maxwell-based card, and that gives you usually about two times the performance per watt compared to the last generation. That's a successor to the 760, and it's probably about twice as fast as the 760, so I can't wait for some ITX versions of this to come out. I'm, I'm looking at the Asus right now. With, it's got a smaller uh, PCB. So when there's some ITX versions coming out, it'll be very attractive. Quite Not quite as attractive as the 970, but for the money, it'll probably be really attractive. Price point on these is around... Uh, 200 bucks, give or take, depending on the brand you go with. I think these might be 210 or somewhere in that range, but I'm not sure. I haven't seen the uh, full MSRP yet. Now they also have, um, you know, the full suite of NVIDIA GameWorks. There are some interesting things that go on in there. I just don't like how closed off um, most of their most of their software is. Uh, but before we had MSAA, and that's really expensive. You you can run games like at 1080p and it, even at 1440p with these cards but not with MSAA. Just don't even do it. You're going to destroy it. The, the two gigabyte frame buffer is the big deal here. Uh, so they, they each have two gigabytes of GDDR5. Now, why did NVIDIA only give us two gigabytes of memory? That just seems ridiculous this day and age to have two gigabytes of memory on a on a, any decent uh, card because you're not going to be able to run filters in uh, some of the new games coming out that have large textures. It's going to be rough. It's just going to, you know, kind of cut your performance off the knees. Here's the deal with that, and here's well, what I think. There's probably a 960 tie floating around somewhere that'll be out in three or four months, maybe maybe a little longer than that. And that'll come out and be sort of another sweet spot. This is already the sweet spot, as they say, with, with gaming. Um, but there may be that, or maybe they just didn't want to uh, add the memory because it would have raised the price up to a point where, you know, it's getting into the 970 territory, an extra 30 to 50 bucks. Uh, and then people are going to be looking at the 970. Maybe they wanted to uh, force people to get the 970 and the 980 if they're looking at this and saying, well, that's good, but I need a bigger frame buffer, so i got to spend an extra 150 bucks and get a 970 or whatever. So that's all kind of going around in my head, but that's the, that's the thing that um, is my least favorite point about this is that, you know, two gigabytes of GDDR5, 200 bucks. So I'm probably complaining for no reason because it's freaking $200 and it's fast. Uh, we also have dynamic super resolution on these cards, and that uh, what that does is it allows you to play the games at 4K, and I believe even 5K, I'm not 100% sure, I haven't tried that yet, but uh, you play at 4K, even if you don't have a 4K monitor, and so the card takes the 4K resolution and then downsamples it for your 1080p display, and it makes it look really nice. Now what they're also saying is that, you know, 4K downsampled to 1080p, uh, you, you know, playing League of Legends or a mobile like that should be um, about as fast as a 760 running at 1080p with MSAA, but it will look better. So there's that. Um, I'm not sure if anybody wants to buy this card just so that they can run, you know, dynamic super resolution as opposed to MSAA with League of Legends. That just seems a little goofy to me, but you can do it if you want. I think the reason you buy this is because you want to play all the games and you want to play them faster. So it also supports DirectX 12, and that'll be coming out pretty soon, uh, thanks to Windows 10. And we're going to see um, DirectX 12 is probably going to improve performance a lot. It's more similar to Mantle in the way it handles games. It's a low, it gives the developers lower level access to the hardware, and that means just faster games in general. So when DirectX 12 games come out, we may see that they're more optimized and have cooler features. That's pretty cool. MFAA will be out pretty soon to replace. Uh, actually, it's, it's already out pretty much now. So a lot of the games that did support MSAA also support MFAA, and that's NVIDIA's new sampling technology that looks about the same as MSAA, but is about half as expensive as far as, you know, computations go. You might be able to get away with that in some games at this, maybe. I don't have any MFAA games to test, though. I'm sorry. I had Max Payne 3 that has MSAA, but that's like one of the games that doesn't actually support it. 
the 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 bus width on this 128 bits got two 64 bit uh, controllers now here's what what else is interesting both these cards they can run four monitors at the same time they have um uh, five ports and you can run four 4k displays at once thanks to the fact that there are three display ports and also an hdmi 2.0 port um so that's really interesting also it supports 5k so this is really pretty much ready for the future the maxwell stuff is has been ready for the future another thing that's interesting these things are super quiet super efficient low power like 120 watt tdp um they have h.265 encoding that's going to be the next thing especially when 4k uh you know becomes more ubiquitous that's going to be important so that'll allow you to uh, use that for you know small form factor pc in your living room or or something like that and the next thing that's really nice speaking of the 120 watt tdp it doesn't it doesn't usually draw that much you they have to ramp up quite a bit for them to kick on and like playing like world of warcraft or dota league of legends and mobas that sort of thing they probably won't even kick on and they say that league only uses around 30 watts of power i don't have league don't want to mess with league but a lot of you guys out there are going to look at this and be like yeah that might be my next league uh, graphics card maybe I, I don't know but doesn't use a uh, lot of power at all also we have 1024 CUDA cores and those can be used for using for anything you want including productivity so both of these cards here are factory overclocked. The ASUS is slightly faster out of the box, but I was able to overclock the MSI to uh, quite a bit higher, like 50 to uh, about 50 megahertz higher. The ASUS couldn't keep up. I'm thinking that might be because of the six pin and the uh, the eight pin and the full size PCB, but I could do more testing and see if I could tweak the ASUS a bit more, but the MSI was just so damn easy. I just go in and, you know, raise it up a little bit add a tiny bit more voltage, hit apply, and I was like, oh, great, I'm overclocked. I'm 200 megahertz over the, the boost clock from the factory, and there's no artifacts. It's just, it's gaming. I'm getting four or five extra FPS, so that's pretty cool. MSAA on these, just no. That's two gigabyte, can't handle it. Um, Max Payne can use a ton of memory if you turn on all the filters and stuff. It looks just, just fine to me without the filters, but that, you guys may think I'm crazy, so... I don't think it's a bad idea to play Max Payne maxed out at 1440p with this card. Just turn off the filters. You can even use tessellation. Just no MSAA, I'm sorry. Test bench we're using, uh, EVGA X99 uh, classified. We also have the, uh, you know, the crazy Intel Extreme 8 core on there. We've got 32 gigabytes of G-Skill, Rip Jaws, 4 memory on there. Stuff's uh, awesome. It's, I'm, I'm putting it on there right now, but it's probably going to go into my next system coming up. Uh, we got the V8 from uh, Cooler Master bit loud but it uh, stays nice and cool i got the hyperx 3k from uh, kingston as our ssd uh we're running a, an old velociraptor just as extra storage in the system it's just there uh, for games and whatnot uh, and then we have the 1000 watt fractal newton uh power supply all right let's do the uh, the benchmarks here and compare it to the 970 so uh valley as you can see here um one card eh, 1440p doesn't really cut it but uh you know, once we get a, a couple of cards in there, the, the frame rate bumps up considerably. And then one uh, 970 is only about 5 FPS slower than both of these in SLI. And again, remember, a, a 970, you can turn on the filter. So the thing to remember about SLI is you do not get 4 gigabytes of RAM when you stick it in. It's only going to be, uh, you know, limited to the 2 gigabytes of RAM. You're not going to get to double up your, your, your memory or anything like that. So in uh, Bioshock, uh, we have a decent jump up, you know, an extra 30 FPS or so. Not too bad at 1440. Um, it hit 89 FPS, and that's with everything maxed out. And that, that's including, like, even running some filters. So Bioshock is a very optimized game, uh, and it actually was quite a bit better than, than one 970 in, in Bioshock. So, the, the, the you know, two of these, it, of course, it's like 50 bucks more than a 970 when you buy two of them, but and maybe, even, maybe even 60 or 70 bucks more than a 970 when you buy two of them, but quite a bit faster um, than one 970 in Bioshock. Battle Mage lift, lifted them. It's a uh, CryEngine game. And this one is uh, interesting because I figured that 1440 would have, you know, like the, the, the 970 would have the advantage. But as you can see, um, two of these is very playable at all resolutions. But the, uh, the 970 didn't quite keep up at uh, 1440p, you know, compared to two of these. But it, it was better at 1080p that's just strange i don't know if you're someone who's playing like a lot of unreal engine games and games that are made with similar technologies you're gonna want to look at this because of course you know these things can play it just fine and msaa was off the uh, fxaa was on these cards can play it just fine two of them even better but one 970 
plays it better um, at all resolutions than two of these. So that's interesting for an Unreal Engine game. Now trying two, it's back to the other way around. Um, even with all the filters on, two of these had enough power uh, to be slightly faster than the, uh, you know, the 970. Uh, one of these was okay, playable at 1080, not so much at 1440, but two of them just fine at 1440, and then, uh, yeah. So the last game we tested was Max Payne, and again, if you turn on the filters, the 970 can handle it up to a certain point. Um, the only the only card that I know of that can actually handle fully maxed out Max Payne, like Max Payne to the max, maximum Max Payne, was this card right here, the Titan Z. The only card I've ever been able to, to, to play Max Payne with, with all the filters turned up to stupid insanity mode. Not even a 980. So Titan Z is the only single card I've seen that can do that. Uh, two of these does a pretty good job of Max Payne. Again, we turned off the MSAA. Um, and then, of course, um, the, uh, the interesting thing with this one is at 1080p, the 1970 did a better job, but at 1440, two of these outran the 970 again. So here's what I'm kind of thinking. If you're doing 1440p gaming and you don't mind turning off some of the filters, two of these might be a cool way to go over a 970. But at the same time, right now you can get a 970. You have a bigger frame buffer on that card. It'll work with some of the older games like Skyrim that don't do so hot with, um, well, Skyrim with an E and B really doesn't like SLI all that much. You can get it to work with uh, NVIDIA Inspector, but not even very well. Um, so if you want to play this, you know, like, like all the newer games are pretty much going to be fine with SLI, but if you want to play like the older games like Skyrim and stuff, 1970 will get you much farther than two of these will. Uh, and it'll also be pretty decent. Uh, this, this, I mean, these are a little bit faster, but you can turn on the filters with the 970. So, if you're thinking about two of these, I would probably lean towards a 970, even though it's slightly slower in most tests, because the idea here is that you know it's it's slightly slower, but the price per you know performance is about even. You know, you don't have to spend as much to get two you know one 970 as opposed to two of these. So that that's cool. The other thing is you can always buy another 970 next year or down the road or or whatever and then you'll have uh, you know a, a decent chunk of extra performance if this had more ram i think we would have a, a slightly different story here and the other thing that's interesting is um there might be um, a 960 tie somewhere hiding out because we had the you know the 660 and then the 660 tie and then the 760 and then the 760 tie um you know 980, 980, you know, 780, 780 tie. I'm waiting on a 980 tie, maybe. I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see what comes out from NVIDIA. Right now, it's a great card for just pretty much all gaming up to 1440p. Even some games at 4K, if you're playing like MOBAs at 4K, go, go for it, dude. Just have fun. I don't know. I'm, I'm like blown away by it and underwhelmed by it at the same time. It's the, it's the weirdest thing. So quiet. The temperatures on this thing, both these cards, 60 degrees or cooler almost all the time, even with an overclock. Super quiet and super efficient. Probably the one of the most efficient and quiet cards I've ever seen. Just wish it was um, had a little bit bigger of a frame buffer, but 200 bucks around-ish, depending on which one you buy. So let me know what you think of this graphics card. Let me know if you think uh, you're going to be picking one up and why you're going to pick one up. Let me know if you're going to get two of these, or let me know if you're going to get a 970. I'm kind of curious to see... Uh, what all of you do. There'll be a lot of stories to tell about this and a lot of options and I hope I've given you guys an education. Do not take my opinion as, you know, what you should do. Do your own research and use this video simply to learn. You know, I did tell you what I would do, but don't let that be like the you know, the science textbook for you guys. You guys go out there and make your own way in the world. It'll be wonderful and peaceful. All right, I think I'm going to go. Oh, I got to edit this video. I thought I was going to go play video games now. Mm -hmm.